told you, if the Chiefs lose, I was going to need your support, not only as a colleague, but as a friend. And you know when I knew, Joy, I might not be able to lean on you for that? I'm going to tell you the exact moment when, because you were on speakerphone, and I said, all right, Joy, I'll talk to you later. And you said, bye, Nick. And then you shouted, love you, Danielle, bye. I'm like, what the hell? She's saying love you to my wife. I just said goodbye. I got a very cursory bye, Nick. And then a shout to my wife. I was like, I can't lean on Joy. Uh, I can't. Listen, at this point, if you're not firmly in the know that I love Danielle more than you, I'm sorry. I don't know what else I have uh, to yeah, do. Okay. You shouldn't take that as well, a knock. Danielle, you know, your wife, fair. is a spectacular human being who I adore. Uh, you yeah. are friends. Mm -hmm. But you also dug yourself very firmly mm -hmm. in this hole. And I will say, yeah. I have suffered at the hands of Tom Brady probably more than you over the past 20 years being a Dolphins fan and yeah. having grown up in Pittsburgh. So I've suffered a lot, and I yeah. chose to make a good life decision after he won against the Atlanta Falcons in the most spectacular fashion we've ever seen in a Super Bowl. I decided I was no longer going to live a life of saying that Tom Brady wasn't the greatest to ever play that position because he clearly yeah. is. And even though I picked the Chiefs to win mm -hmm. yesterday, I've, I, I made that pick with no conviction. So I'm not suffering the way that you are. Um, I can relate to it, okay. obviously, because I've been through it, but I'm not suffering the way that you are. Because I make better choices. Well, I am going to... I, okay, yeah, sure, you make better... You, you know what I did after the Falcon Super Bowl? I also called him the greatest ever, and I said, it ends here. And how much better would all our lives be if he had just rode off in the sunset and retired right then and there? It would have been great. He'd added the five rings. It would have been fine. It would have been over. But I will pay tribute to Tom Brady two minutes from now in a way that I don't think anyone quite has yet. But first, you mentioned, you know, I dug myself deep. Let's just show the audience how deeply I dug myself. I posted yesterday my Super Bowl bets. Now, you can go through all these if you'd like. The moral of the story is this. There's 11 of them on there. That's 0 for 11, Joy. Do you know how hard it is to go 0 for 11? When you're budgeting out your gambling, you don't, in, you're like, all right, what's the worst case? Three for eight, so that's like minus five. It, 0 for 11 really puts you in a tough spot, including what I thought was the sharpest bet of the day. Look at that second to last one. Tommy Townsend over 38 and a half yards for his shortest punt. The logic was the Chiefs aren't going to be punting inside the 40. They're going to be going for it or kicking field goals. So no problem. He's not going to have to do one of those corner kicks. No, he didn't have to do one of those. You know what he did do? Shank it right off his foot. Just dead shank right, then dead shank left. Two of his first three punts went under 30. Forget under 38 and a half. They went under 30. It was maybe the worst bet ever made. Sammy Watkins, first touchdown. Sammy Watkins, I bet it later over 38 and a half yards. It's not on the screen. He had one catch for 13 yards. Right. But somehow, Joy, that wasn't my worst tweet. You want to see my this worst tweet? The worst? I'm going to show you the worst tweet. No, oh, yes, I did this, this is the worst tweet. Yeah. Tweet. Yeah. What it says at the bottom is, out in a blizzard in New York City, shopping for a Chiefs red blazer. To what, do you know how many places I had to go to find a perfectly colored velvet Chiefs blazer in New York City? I'm sure many, because you know that's a very specific I had to pay for that? color, too. Like, Chiefs red is a very specific red. It's a very specific red. And I needed it to be velvet. And I was, because I do everything last minute, I was shopping for it on a Sunday in a blizzard. I found it. I had it tailored in store, ready to wear. It'll never be worn. I need to burn it. So that's where Nick was wrong. That plus all my Tom Brady takes. That's where Nick was wrong. So now, in order to, you're really enjoying this. This is not emotional support. I'm, this I'm, is, I'm trying. This is nonverbal taunting. Here's what this, it is. You know what? I, I say this. Yeah. I know me. that America wants you to take your medicine, but I also understand uh -huh. that no one, no matter what they say, predicted that they were going to lose in the fashion in which they lost. So to that, to that level, I, I dismiss any take that anyone has. You can say that you picked the Bucks, and that's great. Good for you. 
But you did not predict that, that Patrick Mahomes was not going to score a touchdown, that it was going to go down the way that it did. So that I don't want to hear. So that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think that's that you should true. hang your head so low. Your Tom Brady takes I never agreed with, and you have to take your medicine for that. But the Chiefs' loss <laughs> uh -huh. was so dramatic in fashion yeah. that I don't think you should actually feel that bad about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, th I appreciate that. The problem is, while no one predicted the, the Chiefs to lose that way, the way that game went is exactly how I predicted just 100% wrong. I did predict a blowout. I did predict one team to look awesome. I did predict one quarterback not to have any touchdowns, and I just had it all wrong, which is why I now pay my penance, do my rosary beads, by giving Tom Brady fans this, okay? I said a couple years ago that Tom Brady and Jerry Rice were the only two NFL players ever that if you bisected their career, if you cut it dead in the middle, they were a first ballot Hall of Famer on either career. That they had two separate Hall of Fame careers, the first half and the second half. After last night, I have to amend that take. Tom Brady becomes the first football player ever, and this one I'm confident he will be the only football player ever. He has had three distinct Hall of Fame careers, and I can prove it to you. He's played 21 years, cut his career into seven-year bites. First seven, middle seven, next seven. No funny math, don't have to do any uh, twists and turns. Let's just look at it. So that first seven, let's call that the Aikman phase, where the numbers aren't overwhelming, but is the best clutch quarterback in the league, is not a game manager in a negative way, but the best version of a game manager. Tom Brady's for seven years, almost the same amount of division titles, same number of Super Bowls, one more Super Bowl MVP, neither one a regular season MVP. So Tom Brady's for seven years, first third of his career, that's the Troy Aikman phase. That in and of itself, by itself, gets you into the Hall of Fame. Now give me the next seven years. This is the Dan Marino phase. Division titles about the same. Super Bowl appearances, Brady has more. Regular season MVPs, Brady has more. Passing touchdown leader, Marino by one. Also in this seven year stretch, Brady had the 07 season where not only are you undefeated and go 16-0 in the regular season, Quarterback, statistically speaking, it was up to that point in time, the single greatest quarterbacking season ever. Whose record did he break? Marino's. The touchdown record, all the records he broke that year was Marino's. So those middle seven years where he went to two Super Bowls but didn't win any, he accomplished in those seven years, as far as the big shiny object accomplishments, what Marino did in his entire career. And now the truly unfathomable part, the final third of his career, the Joe Montana phase. From 2014 to now, four rings to four rings, three Super Bowl MVPs to three Super Bowl MVPs. Brady has one regular season MVP in the stretch. Montana had two. Montana also went to another team just like Brady did. Uh, Montana took that team, the Chiefs, to the AFC title game. Brady took his team to the damn Super Bowl I'm, and won the Super Bowl. Brady also, if we were to add another line, Super Bowl titles is four apiece to four apiece, but Super Bowl appearances would be five to four because in these seven years, Brady went to another Super Bowl, the one against the Eagles, where he threw 505 yards and lost the game. So think about that for a moment. Tom Brady, first seven, middle seven, Next seven. And if you saw me swallow hard, it's because I'm, I'm choking down the bile that I'm feeling just by having to say this. First seven, middle seven, next seven. Hall of Fame first ballot, Hall of Fame first ballot, Hall of Fame first ballot. The first seven years, the Aikman phase. The middle seven years, the Marino phase. The next seven years, the Montana phase. That, my friends, we will never see again. There is, it is... Not realistic, no matter how long the time horizon goes, that we will see another player in the first seven years of his career win at the level Brady did. Now, Mahomes might, but it's 
it's all of the, that follows. Win at the level Brady did in the first seven. In the next seven, continue statistical and team excellence. Got to a couple Super Bowls, won a couple MVPs. They had a bye almost every single year. They were in the conference championship game two out of every three years. And then in the next seven, which means you got to play 21 years to even be in this conversation, you somehow do more winning in the final seven than you did in your first 14 combined. And your first 14 combined, already we were talking about you as one of the three greatest quarterbacks ever. And you do it in a new system with a new team. That will never be done again. We, what Jerry Rice did, being able to have 20 years of sustained excellence where you could say he had two separate Hall of Fame careers was unprecedented. Brady matched that. But for Brady to now have upped the ante to three separate Hall of Fame careers and you could do a blind stat test of Troy Aikman's career against Tom's first seven years, Dan Marino's career against Tom's middle seven years, and Joe Montana's career against Tom's last seven years, it, it is not to be believed. And that is what everyone must acknowledge. Everyone already acknowledges he's the greatest quarterback ever. I've acknowledged that for a long time. I just foolishly thought he was done. When he threw the pick six against Tennessee, I took my victory lap. See, see I told you so. And then he, he shoved that victory lap, well, you know where. So, there it is, Tom Brady. I doff my proverbial cap to you. Some would say I doff my proverbial clown suit that I'm wearing to you. you. You got it done again. And you got it done under circumstances that I did not think were possible. Mark Schlereth tells us